Election objections, why two Southeast Texas congressmen are supporting this crowd in Washington and why they signed a letter asking for a delay on Congress certifying the electoral votes. This is it, election day. Four candidates, two months of campaigning, at least a half billion dollars spent on ads and one big goal. I'm Scott Thuman in Georgia to explain. Obviously, this is a huge undertaking. What's happening now and what's next for vaccine distribution in Jefferson County? Stay with us and we'll tell you the steps you need to take if you're in the second phase. And it's dry right now, but that'll change by tomorrow afternoon. Live from the KFDM studios, you're watching KFDM 6 News at 6. Hi everyone, thank you for watching. I'm Angel San Juan. Tiffany Murphy has the night off. Developing right now, while the voters in Georgia are deciding two critical runoffs to determine control of the Senate, a large crowd is protesting the outcome of the presidential election. Many supporters of President Trump claim there was fraud in the election and tomorrow, several in Congress plan to ask for a committee to examine the election and the process that took place in six states. They want a 10-day delay in certifying the electoral votes set for tomorrow. Among the congressmen who've signed a letter backing such a move, Republicans Randy Weber and Brian Babin of Southeast Texas both say there was fraud, even though the Supreme Court refused to get involved and dozens of judges have rejected lawsuits seeking to overturn the vote. Congressman Weber and Babin have signed a letter with other members of the GOP outlining their objections among them, they claim fraud and wrongdoing and unconstitutional ballots. You can read the letter on KFDM.com and also on our KFDM Facebook. And right now, there is about one hour left for voters to cast ballots in the Georgia runoffs. That will determine control of the U.S. Senate. St. Clair Chief Political Correspondent Scott Thuman reports tonight from Georgia. If it feels like voters have done this all before, they have but not with so much at stake. The consequences of electing Democrats John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, or Republican Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, have skyrocketed since November. It's one thing to get Biden in the office, but then to not have him be able to pass any of his agenda, anything go through the Senate, it's like a wasted effort. My son asked me to make sure I vote, and he passed away, so I want to make sure that I did my vote. What hangs in the balance? Who holds the Senate? What kind of power will Joe Biden have as president? How will Congress handle everything from COVID funding to immigration to the environment? That's why we need to come out and vote because it's going to impact what's going to change in Washington. You know, Georgia since, what, 90-something hadn't been blue? You have to look at it from both sides, and um, it's always good to have a balance. As with many things these days, even though his days are running short, this election also about President Trump. The Republican candidates saying they'll object to Congress certifying Joe Biden's victory, putting even more pressure on already overwhelmed voters. Georgia voters have never had more power than you have today. Everything in the country comes down to this, Georgia. Everyone's counting on us. So many factors today. For example, will some Trump supporters overlook their distrust in the voting system and take part anyway? Will a surge in African-American voters make the difference? What about those who mailed in their ballots, but perhaps not in time? And of course, the roughly half billion dollars spent here in Savannah, Georgia. I'm Scott Thuman. And at this hour, the state COVID-19 tracking report shows COVID patients account for more than 20% of patients in all staffed hospital beds in the region, which includes Jefferson, Orange, Hardin, and eight other counties. And in Beaumont, 175 newly confirmed COVID cases, increasing the total to more than 7,200. And there is one more death to report, increasing the total to 122. All but eight had underlying health problems. Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick says the federal and state governments are working to get the greatest number of vaccines to the most people possible. And he also points out we've never done this before. FDM's Victoria White reports on where we are with vaccine distribution. We've seen healthcare workers and first responders getting the COVID-19 vaccination. They're in what's called phase 1A. 
obviously this is a huge undertaking and one that the state has not been involved in during our lifetimes. And Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick says people who are 65 and older or 16 and over with underlying health conditions, what's called Phase 1B, are also getting vaccinations when supplies are available. We're there now. I do not think that the availability of the vaccines is sufficient to meet the, de the demand that exists for over 65s right now, but they've started the over 65 vaccinations and utilized most of their stockpiles and are awaiting new uh, shipments to come in. It's up to the individual to seek out and get the vaccine unless they're in an essential role or long-term care facility. Exactly. He says those in phase 1B need to reach out to their health care providers, pharmacies or other points of distribution. Right now it's my understanding that Market Basket and HEB have set up websites for the vaccine for taking care of 1B and people need to go on there and register. Stress on hospitals is high, so is demand for the COVID-19 vaccine. You know, I'm an advocate for everyone who wants the vaccine to be able to get it as quickly as they can. Brannick says over the last several days, ICUs have been completely full and numbers of COVID patients in general beds are going up too. But we're hopeful that as a result of our constant calling to Austin every day and, and our constant communication with those that have the ability to impact uh, the distribution of the vaccines that we're going to see uh, a wider availability locally. In Beaumont, Victoria White, KFDM 6 News. Judge Rannick says for citizens to stay the course and not let their guard down so that we can maybe see an end in sight this spring. Developing tonight, the recent closure of a center in Beaumont to serve people with special needs shows the difficulty another nonprofit with a similar mission faces. KFTM's Rocio de la Fe reports the Arc of Greater Beaumont says the pandemic has impacted its operations with the community it serves. Nonprofits have been hit hard during the pandemic. The Arc of Greater Beaumont is no exception. It's going to take us as a community to really come together and help provide support. The foundation provides resources for adults, children, and their families that have intellectual and developmental disabilities. There's not a whole lot of support other than help with the school district and stuff like that. And so that's where we come in. We're able to help provide different activities to support the child and the family. Executive Director Sarah Hardin says the pandemic not only disrupted how the organization carries out its programs, but also to pay for them. We are a nonprofit. Of course, most of our most of our programs and stuff are funded by fundraising or grants. And so whenever you're not able to meet and have these events to raise the funds. And now with the closure of the recreation education complex, COVID-19 has taken away yet another resource. I have a daughter with Down syndrome, and so she could have benefited from their programs in the future. A lot of the people that come here are such creatures of habit, and just like you, you know, you get up in the morning, you go the same route to work, you stop at Starbucks, you have that routine, and that was part of their routine. The team at the Arc of Greater Beaumont has moved most programs online, but Hardin says it's been tough on the community. The organization is desperately needing funds that will allow them to continue their mission of helping those that need extra love and support. In Beaumont, Ursia de la Fe, KFDM 6 News. In the meantime, the organization provides support over the phone and online with the hope of meeting face to face soon. Well, rain is on the horizon, but we still have a little time to prepare. Greg Boswick joins us now to tell us more about that. Hi, Greg. How you doing, Angel? It looks like really tomorrow morning is not too bad to get into the afternoon. That's when the rain will move in. Looking to the southwest uh, from our studios, do good and roofing 911 traffic moving very slow. Actually beginning to move a while ago, was just totally at a stop there on Interstate 10 heading eastbound up through Beaumont. And you see some high clouds kind of out in the distance right now. Up in Lumberton, do good and Altus Lumberton Hospital on Highway 69. No problems there, but I think tomorrow at this time we'll have quite a bit of rain moving through. Sour Lake Elementary Market Basket WeatherNet also sponsored by Truckville. We're looking at 58 right now after high of 68. It will be uh, fairly cool, of course, tonight. And temperatures across the lakes are mainly running in the 50s right now, uh, mid to upper 50s up in uh, portions of Tyler County, actually 51 now around Sperger, further to the south, we're running in the 50s and 60s as well. It is a soggy weather forecast, no doubt about it for tomorrow. We'll take a look in a few minutes. 
Thank you, Greg. Right now, the Baptist Hospital Mobile Medical Unit is open and ready for patients. We first showed you the unit in a live report yesterday with Rocio de la Fay. This is how it looked today. The hospital chaplain led a blessing of the unit for doctors, nurses, and other staff members. The unit will allow Baptist to treat non-COVID patients and ensure there is space necessary inside the hospital to treat patients with the coronavirus. Coming up later, a little dog finds itself with a big problem. How first responders helped her get unstuck. And just ahead, complaints about what some in Austin call a lack of fairness in how the COVID vaccine is distributed. Well, pretty quiet weather out there right now, but everything will be changing, especially by the weekend. Some